Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. When you buy new bits to upgrade your PC, do you ever get the sense that, well, the manuals just don't cut it? You jump on YouTube and you search for the easiest way to install the whiz bang doohickey thingamabob thingamajigger the easy way. Well, I'm here to answer your search query. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day of the week, so do yourself a big old favor and make sure you're subscribed. Now, Cooler Master sent over one of their brand new Master Liquid ML360 RGB TR4 edition all-in-one coolers. So I decided that we'd check it out, we'd unbox it, and I'd show you how to install it on your Threadripper system. Let's do it. Before we begin, I just want to clear some stuff up because every time we do these videos about AIOs, we get asked the same questions and I just want to make your life a little bit easier. Number one, please watch the whole video because I'll probably answer the question that you're, you're going to ask inevitably anyway. So yeah, and if I don't answer the question, then feel free to ask away. Number two, this cooler will work with AuraSync, RGB Fusion, Mystic Light, etc, etc, etc. Number three, every case is different. So the installation of the fans and radiators will probably be different to your system and it's not going to be the exact same way as this guide unless you're using the same case and yeah the case that we're using is the Cooler Master H500M. Number four this cooler will work with the Threadripper 2990WX since it's rated at the same TDP. Number five you don't need to fill up these coolers with fluid or change your fluid or even do any type of servicing with these coolers whatsoever they're self-contained and the water is never meant to leave them or be put back in. Now the motherboard we're using for this guide is the ASRock X399 Professional Gaming with a Threadripper 1950X. With all that said Let's get into it. Alrighty, let's take a look at the Master Liquid ML360 RGB TR4 edition. We're gonna unbox it and see what you get in the box. The first thing we've got here is the 120 millimeter RGB fan. These fans are not addressable RGB, however, they are regular old analog RGB. And as you can see here, it's got the RGB connector and the PWM fan connector. Alrighty, what else have we got here in the box? Ooh, we've got the manual. Somehow I feel like we're just not going to need the manual, so let's get rid of it. Bye. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at the goodie bag with all the screws and all the cables and everything you need to get started with your installation. First off is the PWM fan splitter. This splits one PWM connector out into three for the fans for the installation. This is an analog RGB splitter, splits one connection out into five connections, although you only need four for this installation. Also, there is an RGB controller. You can see the RGB connection on top and it's got buttons and it's powered with the Molex at the bottom. Here is the Molex cable to power the RGB controller. Next up, we've got the RGB connectors themselves. This plugs into the RGB splitter to plug in all your RGB goodies. And here is a bag full of screws and all the other goodies you're gonna need to actually install the fans and the cooler in your system. All right, let's take a closer look at the cooler itself. The radiator is a 360 millimeter radiator. It can fit three 120 millimeter fans and you can use any fans you like. In fact, the fans that I'm using for this installation guide are not the ones that come with it. However, the installation instructions are exactly the same. The cold plate has been completely redesigned and changed from the ML360L to cover the whole IHS of a Threadripper CPU. You'll notice that the mounting hardware is permanently attached and that new copper cold plate will cover the entire IHS of a Threadripper CPU. And coming out of the pump, you've got an RGB connector and a pump speed connector. Okay, let's start the installation process. You're going to need to locate all 12 of these thumb screws. These screws attach the fans to the radiator. It's a pretty simple process. Just line your fans up with the radiator and screw them in. Like I mentioned in the intro, fan placement and radiator placement will most likely be different for your system. In this case, which is my case, the H500M, this is the optimal way to install the fans and radiator. Next thing you'll need to do is locate all 12 of these little guys. There's only 12, so you won't get too confused. And what we're going to do is attach the radiator itself to the mounting bracket that comes on the H500M. Like I said before as well, your case might be different. Yeah, so what we're doing is we're just going to chuck the screws in. 
make it nice and easy and time lapse go <music> Before we drop the radiator in, we're going to install the PWM fan splitter. What you want to do is locate the CPU fan header on your motherboard, plug it in and feed it through the back of the case. Now the reason why we're doing this now is chances are you won't be able to get access to that connector once the radiator has been installed in the top of the case. If you have a case that has one of these type of brackets, I would suggest feeding through all the cables at this point before you drop it in, otherwise you're just going to have a hard time getting it in. Before you go ahead and install the water block, make sure you remove the sticker, otherwise the cooling performance will not be as good. I've seen quite a few people actually leave this on in other videos. Not good, don't do that. I'm going to show you the best way to apply thermal paste on a Threadripper CPU. This is after a lot of testing, I've done a lot of Threadripper stuff that you haven't seen on the channel, I've built lots of workstations for people and this has been the best method that I've discovered to get the best coverage for the optimal cooling performance. What you want to do is make a grid of 9 small dots of thermal paste and then 4 really nice dollops of thermal paste in the intersects between the 9 dots. When you press the cooler down, it'll spread it out absolutely perfectly. I've done this multiple times and removed coolers multiple times and the coverage has always been pretty much perfect. Alright, it's time to install the cooler. What we're going to do is when we push down, we're just going to give it a little bit of a wiggle to spread out the thermal compound and tighten it up. Pretty simple. Alrighty, you're going to want to locate the pump speed cable and what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to install this. Now on this motherboard you'll notice that there is a CPU opt slash water pump header. You want to plug it into that header right there and that will allow you to control the pump speed in your BIOS or your fan control software. Next up we're going to do the bit that everyone loves and connect up the RGB. We're going to locate the power for the controller and the power for the controller plugs into the bottom of the controller. It only plugs in one way so you can't mess it up and you plug the other end into Molex. Grab an RGB connector, plug the RGB connector into the top of the controller, locate the RGB splitter. Now we're only going to be plugging this end into the controller itself. When you plug it in, make sure those arrows are facing each other on the same side, otherwise it won't work and you could possibly damage your lighting or your controller. And the next thing we're going to do is plug in the fans and the pump to the lighting on the splitter itself. Now this is exactly the same and what we're going to do is just rinse and repeat this process. So what you want to do is the same thing, make sure the arrows are lined up, plug them in and you'll be good to go. Rinse and repeat this process for all of your fans and the water pump itself and you should be good to go. Just going to add a little bit of bonus info as well. If you want to use your motherboard RGB sync, plug that into an RGB header on your motherboard and plug the other ends in like we did in the last step. The final thing to do is locate the PWM splitter that we plugged in towards the start of the guide and plug in your three fans. Pretty straightforward. And that pretty much wraps up the installation guide for the ML360 RGB TR4 edition. Let's see how it looks in action. If you have any questions about installing the Master Liquid ML360 RGB TR4 edition, drop a comment down below. All the products mentioned in this video can be purchased down below if that's something that you wanted to do. Otherwise, they're there anyway, whatever. If you, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, tell us what you hated about it because YouTube, that's what people do anyway. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And Guys, from preliminary testing on this cooler, it's performing uh, better than any other cooler that I've used on through on. <laughs> right at the end. <laughs> oh, what I was gonna say is, um, it's performing about seven degrees better than 
most other coolers that I've used on Threadripper. Well, seven degrees better than all the air coolers anyway. Uh, the other air AIOs I've tested kind of come close, but this is shaping up to be pretty good. I'd love to try those Enemax ones though. So Enemax, if you're watching, you know where to find me.